Hi everybody, my name is Kaylee, and welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. Okay everybody, welcome to Storytime Smash Sunday. Sorry this video is being posted a little bit late. I went out last night and I did not wake up until the middle of the day today. So that is my excuse for that. And if you guys didn't see, I posted a YouTube video yesterday as well. So if you guys wanna go tune into that before you watch this video or tune into that one after you watch this video, I feel like that would kind of be like an ass backward thing. Yeah, I don't know. Anyways, um, a lot of you guys said that you do like this black background so I think that that's what we're gonna start doing for the storytime smash Sundays and then the white background I'll just have for like my regular story times and if you guys hear my dog snoring again there's nothing I can do okay it is what it is but without further ado I'm going to bring you guys up close there we go um I ended up taking my nails off so don't mind them yeah anyways I'm going to do my quick usual little rundown for those of you who might be new here for most of the video I would be looking in this direction because my mirror's over here and I would like to see what I'm doing I do tell these story times in a first person point of view so if you don't like that then you can leave there's the door and these story times are sent in by anonymous people. Before we get into today's story times, I am going to do my eyebrows off camera or else we will be here all day. So BRB. Okay, we're back. The eyebrows have entered the room. Now we can get into these story times. Okay, so story time about how another girl and I were dating the same guy at the same time. Are we surprised? No because men are just men there's literally nothing else i feel like that's just the most valid reason men are men chef's kiss okay so a little background information i was 16 and a junior in high school and i used to talk to this boy who we're gonna call tyler now him and i met in middle school and we became friends not best friends just friends you know like that like acquaintance friend you know that you sometimes talk to but really only when you have to yeah that was the type of friends that we were but fast forward to the end of my junior year in high school him and i started talking a lot more and we became super good friends like we would talk to each other every day all day for the next three months um eventually it turned into more than a friendship because we were doing everything that couples would do just without the label so the one day him and i are hanging out and he sent a picture of me to one of my friends on his snapchat so you know she snapchats him back and then like he goes to send another picture of me and whenever he says look i look at his phone he takes the picture and then he goes to send it to her but i see this girl on his best friends list who is his number one best friend and her name is Bailey. Now, I don't have Snapchat, so that's why I'm not on his best friends list. But the issue with this was this kid was on Snapchat 24 fucking seven, okay? Like this shit was his life. Him and his friends would spam each other all day on this app. So for her to be number one on his best friends list, they have to talk a lot. So, you know, as I'm sitting there, I'm like, oh, does that say Bailey Meach? Which is a girl that we both know. And he's like, no, my friend slept with her. I would never do that or even talk to her. This girl's name is Bailey Moore. Like, oh, great. Now, I'm not gonna lie. I was low-key annoyed because he didn't even try to explain who this Bailey Moore girl was. And now, of course, as a woman, I am fixating on this fucking girl who I have no idea who she is or why she has any significance in his life in general. So we just fucking love that for me yay me well we are going to fast forward to spring break i was in texas and tyler and his family went to florida for spring break and we pretty much talked the whole time that we were on vacation except for the last two days of his trip and i just decided that i was going to leave him alone because i wanted him to have fun and not worry about his clingy girlfriend and also i didn't want him to see me as clingy so fast forward then he starts texting me about how when we get back from vacation he wants me to come over and meet his mom which i was super fucking excited obviously because this meant that our relationship was progressing so i just told him to let me know when and yeah i was really fucking excited until i remembered that he told me that he was going to prom with one of his friends whenever he got home from vacation and no i'm not talking about our prom i'm talking about a prom at a different school from his hometown where he grew up 
So this is whenever I decide that I'm going to look this Bailey bitch up on Instagram because I just had a just a small feeling that she was from his hometown. And what do you know? She's from his fucking hometown. Great. This is just amazing, right? Right. Wrong. Now I'm aggravated. Anyways. So then I decided to text him and I'm like, well, you know, he could be going with somebody else. You know, there's a bunch of people, you know, that he's friends with still from his hometown. So who knows? So I'm like, hey, who are you going to prom with again? I forget who you said you were going with, even though I'm pretty sure he never told me who he was going with in the first place. Um, And then he goes, oh, I'm going with Bailey Moore. So I just left him on red because now I could not shake the feeling that something was going on. So, you know, then of course he keeps asking me what's wrong and, you know, I told him nothing i was just curious blah 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 so fast forward we're both home from our vacations and he went to a party saturday night and then the next day he went go-karting or whatever the fuck with his friends and i'm like kind of annoyed like listen i know you have your own life i get it 100 percent and i will never want to tell you who you can and can't hang out with what you can and can't do but at the same time it's kind of annoying because it seems like he didn't even give a fuck about whether he saw me or not you know it's like he didn't even fucking miss me while he was gone so you know then i text him and i'm like you're gonna have to tell me if you want this or not because i'm not gonna to keep putting my time and energy into something that isn't going anywhere you know the funniest thing is i've literally been going through this with my situationship for like the past two months literally the exact same fucking thing i mean it's low-key both of us like back and forth but at the same time it's like bruh so i can relate right now anyway so then he gave me his bullshit excuse of no i want you i love you blah 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 so you know then we go and we see a movie together and after we're done i ask him about this bailey girl one more time because i'm still just like confused a little bit on who this bitch was and then he goes i promise i'm just going to prom with her so that way i can get drunk with mitchell after and there wasn't really anything that i could do because i had no physical hard evidence that he was doing anything with this girl like there was no proof in the pudding anyway so for like the next week we were good and of course like i said earlier i just still have this feeling that i can't get over so fast forward to the weekend he said that he was busy because he was going to a party on Friday night and then Saturday night as well so I decided that I was just gonna go to my friend's house and get fucked up as well fast forward I decided to drive home don't judge me don't judge me I was young and I was dumb don't fucking judge me okay okay so yeah i decided to drive home and when i got home my mom was like have you been drinking and of course my drunk self says no thinking that i was totally gonna get away with it but she could smell the alcohol on me so yeah um i ended up getting grounded and getting my phone taken away and my parents were nice enough to say that if tyler wants to call or text you he can get a hold of us so you know i was happy i would still be able to talk to my boyfriend until my my parents went through my phone and they found out that I had been doing the nasty with Tyler. God, I do not miss being a teenager. Oh, and that um, Tyler and I weren't using protection because there was a text message in there talking about me taking a plan B. So now they think that I am spiraling out of control. Like, calm down. I was literally just having sex, okay? It's the 21st fucking century. Teenagers do the nasty get over it don't think that i don't know that y'all weren't doing the same shit you know i think parents need to realize that teenagers are going to experiment like they're there's really no stopping them unless you literally lock them in a basement and never let them out until like they're an adult they're going to do shit but instead of crucifying them for it maybe be there for them and show them the right way to experiment like do you know how many cases i watch on youtube about how girls unalive their babies because they're scared of their parents getting like finding out that they're pregnant, not excusing the fact that they unalived their baby. But what I am saying is that before your kid becomes one of those, open the line of communication. So that way when they start to experiment, you can guide them. Anyways, rant over, back to the story. So you know, my dad comes home and he finds out about all of this shit. And because of this, he made me travel with him for work. So I had to do virtual learning all week in the hotel that we were staying at in another city. So we are going to fast forward to Monday. My dad tells me that I can text or call Tyler if I wanted to, but low-key I didn't because I was really fucking pissed at Tyler. Like how are you gonna not speak to me for an entire week? Like do you even fuck with me for real? No, you don't. 
Anyway, so I texted him and I'm like, I don't have a single missed call or text from you. I genuinely feel like I at least deserved a text this week. And then he was like, I didn't want to make things worse for you. Like, I've been so worried this whole time that we haven't been talking. And then your friend texted me and asked if I'd talk to you because you weren't answering your phone and you didn't show up to school and I want to be with you. I love you so much. Blah, 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 blah. Every other fucking excuse that he's ever used before, he's recycling them. Like, come on, let, let's make up some new excuses, all right? Like, those need to be put in the garbage and burned. So then I'm like, listen, I need to know if I'm wasting my time or not. And then he says, I honestly don't think I'm mentally fit or capable of giving you what you're wanting. So I don't think we should be anything more than friends for your sake. Like, oh my God. Oh my God. Oh, oh you want to get fucked up. For my sake. Beautiful wording. Anyways, and then he's like, because I don't want to do this to you again, and I've realized where I went wrong, and I'm sorry, and I'm like, okay, I knew this was coming, I just had to hear it from you. And then he's like, I still want to hang out with you, but I don't know if we should do anything more than friends, because I don't want you getting hurt. Like, what made you think that we were going to do anything as more than friends? Fuck. Anyway, so I'm sitting here and I'm thinking to myself, okay, when was he actually gonna plan on telling me this? Like, why would you have not texted me this yourself instead of letting me come to you and then you finally deciding that you're going to come forward and tell me the truth about how you're not ready for a relationship yet? Like, come on, grow some fucking balls and be a man, please. So I'm like, okay, can I just ask like what has changed? Like, is this because I got mad at you for not texting me earlier? So then he's like, I don't even know. I'm just struggling with a lot of things right now. Like I am sure you are. So then I'm like, okay, nothing's really changed, but if that's how you feel. And then he's like, I know this sounds cheesy as fuck, but it's literally not you, it's me. Oh my God. I thought I was ready for something, especially someone as great as you. And I'm sorry because I feel so bad. It was just that you were so addictive and I couldn't stop myself. I'm sorry I did this to you. Now while he's feeding me these bullshit excuses, I'm like really sad over here. Like, I'm like, bruh, like why are you doing this to me now? So I'm like, no, it's like my fault for thinking that you wanted something serious when clearly you fucking didn't. And then this motherfucker has the nerve to say, when I'm ready, I'll let you know, but don't wait for me. Be fucking for real. Like, what the fuck? I feel like only someone so full of themselves would say that. Like, hey, I'm gonna go do whatever the fuck I wanna do. I, yeah, no. Goodbye, Tyler. You're done, you're cut. Peace, bitch. So I just left it at that, like fuck that shit. I know I said this earlier, but y'all, this is literally like my situation ship and I for the past like eight months on and off. It's giving me deja vu of the five million conversations that we have had about whether we're gonna be in a relationship or not. Anyway, so fast forward two days later, Tyler, for some reason decided that he was gonna make a private story and add all of my friends on there and then post a picture of him and this Bailey girl in his bed while they're kissing. And I'm like, all right, like, you know, this is fucking annoying because now everybody's sending it to me. And my only response that I can give is, well, I hope he's happy because I don't want to seem like a hating ass bitch, which don't get me wrong, I definitely was. Anyway, so then I find out from one of his best friends that he's actually been sleeping at her house on the weekends for the past month straight. So now I decide that I'm going to text her and like, you know, let her know like, hey sis, I think that we were dating the same guy at the same time. So, you know, I told her and then she was like, OMG, I think you're right. Thank you so much. You know, like most girls wouldn't come and tell me this. And then she stayed with him. Yes. She did. But you know what? Her problem, not mine. Okay, everybody, that is the end of story time number one. Now on to story time number two. Story time about how my mom had an affair with my guy best friend. So a little background information. I was 15 and a sophomore in high school. And me and my guy best friend have been best friends since the sixth grade. We had an awesome friendship and we were inseparable until the beginning of my sophomore year. Everything was fine for like the first month of school and then he started to become very clingy and not in the usual way. It was more like he insisted on coming over my house every day after school and then he would even ask my mom if he could stay over on school nights 
which I thought was weird because he would ask my mom before even like running it by me first, you know, asking like, hey, like, is it cool if I spend the night? Like he just assumed that it would be fine with me, which it most likely would have been, but I was just weirded out because he wasn't telling me. Anyways, um, a little background information on my mom and dad. They were both married, but they had an extremely rocky marriage. Like they were both cheating on each other and they didn't even sleep in the same room together anymore so the one night my guy best friend is spending the night at my house and we both slept in my room but he slept on an air mattress on the floor next to my bed well I woke up in the middle of the night and I don't remember what it was that woke me up but my throat felt pretty dry so I went to the fridge to go get some water but before I went downstairs I realized that my best friend wasn't sleeping on the floor on the mattress anymore so that was a little bit sus but I was like you know what maybe he's just going to the bathroom so so I didn't see the light on in the bathroom so I went over there to see if he actually was in there and the bathroom was only a few doors away from my parents room and my dad wasn't in the house in the general because he was at the bar anyway so I get to the bathroom and of course because why would he just be in the bathroom anyway so then I start wandering around my house trying to find him and after about 10 minutes of looking I decided to loop back around and go to the bathroom to check just one more time but that's whenever I heard noises very disturbing noises coming from my parents bedroom now clearly I knew what they were doing in there like there was no mistaking it for anything else none of that so then I was trying to figure out how I was going to walk in because obviously I'm gonna catch them in the act but like it's awkward what the fuck so then eventually I just decided to walk in and what do you know my mom and my best friend are doing the dirty on my parents bed disgusting so I end up removing my guy best friend from my life just overall and then I also had distanced myself from my mom and I told my dad and ended up convincing him to divorce my mom now I'm living with my dad and my stepmom and I could not be happier um real quick can we just talk about how common this shit seems to be like I cannot tell you the amount of story times that I get talking about people's parents sleeping with their best friends and their friends just in general kind of disturbing I think this should be addressed. But until then, let's get on to story time number three. Story time about how my sister was dating my sugar daddy. So a little background information, I was 18 years old and a senior in high school, and me and my sister were extremely close, okay? And we're gonna call her Ashley. And when I tell you like we're super close, we could, we tell each other everything, okay? Like usually, you know, like your sibling is your best friend, but you kind of keep some things to yourself. No, we would talk about who we were dating, um, who we had slept with, you know, this, that, the next, everything, okay? We were just really close. Keep in mind, Ashley is 16. So she said she met this really nice guy and she was going to meet up with him that following weekend and it was Thursday currently. So I asked her if one of her friends was gonna be there because obviously I wanna make sure that she's safe. She says yes, and then later that night, I asked her if she could cover for me while I went to my sugar daddy's house. So I go over there, him and I, we do some stuff. And then we watch a few movies, but the whole entire time that I'm there, he's like texting this random number that's not even saved in his phone. And obviously I'm curious because what the fuck is more important than me right now, motherfucker? The answer is nothing, nothing. Anyways, so I ask him about it and he's like, oh, it's just the friend, you know, I haven't talked to them in a while. I'm like, okay, whatever. So the next day I skip a few of my classes and I went to his house again and he opened the door and we were gonna go somewhere. So he went and took a shower. While he was showering, I decided that I was gonna go through his phone just for shits and giggles. Well, good thing I did because I looked through that conversation with that random number and lo and behold, they were sending pictures to each other. Lovely. I've officially been scarred for life. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Not all of them were sexual, but I was fucking furious. And then when I see one of the pictures that's not sexual, um, guess who it is? My fucking sister. Yup. So I took screenshots of all this shit and then I sent them to myself. And then I just left his house because I was not about to fucking stay there whenever he's a liar and my sister's a little snake. 
So I went back to school and I decided that I was gonna wait outside until the end of the day whenever my sister and I would usually walk home so that way I could confront her. But she ended up being with a few of her friends so I decided I wasn't gonna do it then because I'm not gonna embarrass my sister in front of a bunch of people and also admit that I have a sugar daddy in front of other people. So on Saturday when she went out, I followed her to the restaurant and of course she was having dinner with my man, lovely. So then I walk up and I grab a seat and I confront them about it and show them the screenshots that I have. And then he's like, please, I'll pay you not to tell anybody. Like I can't have my reputation ruined. So um, I took the money and then I still exposed his ass. Yep, I posted the screenshots everywhere, Facebook, Instagram, everywhere. Um, moral of the story, always pay attention to the little things. Okay, everybody, that is the end of Storytime Smash Sunday. If you guys like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more, maybe hit that subscribe button down below. The link is still not ready yet. I'm so sorry. If you guys want to send in your anonymous story times, though, you could also go to my Instagram, which is going to be linked down below in the description, and just DM me on there. But other than that, I will see you guys next Saturday with a new story time.